Okay. Welcome to the Shepherd's Script Podcast. I am uh, with a buddy of mine. This is actually the first third time guest we've ever had uh, that I've ever had. Yeah, I know, man. It's big time. I'm talking to my good buddy, Brian Silva. Brian, you doing good? I am hanging in there. How about you, Jared? Oh, man. I'm loving life and our little baby's doing good, man. Our, our little daughter, she slept the entire night last night. And then the last two nights slept through the entire night. And so we're getting spoiled right now with babies. I mean, this is, she's been really an easy baby, which has been a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome. Th those are the days we're going to look back on. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, our boys were wild and crazy through the night. I mean, the first year, every two hours they were up. And, you know, it was kind of like that zombie feeling you have for the first mm -hmm. year after having a baby where you're, you're functioning <laughs> through the, you're a functional charismatic knowing that I'm only doing this through the power of the spirit this year. Oh, and, that's good. and, uh, and so this has been a whole lot easier. We kind of been looking around at each other thinking, you know, is there, do we really have a third here? And, uh, so it's been fun. So how, how about you guys, man? How's, how's life, family, how's, how's things going? It's good. It's loud. And, uh, we've got, you know, three, three boys, one girl in the world of air breathing. And then girl number two, just about 12, 13 weeks away, Lord willing. So it's just loud. We, a member of the church recently uh, gave us their sons have grown and left the house and they gave us like three buckets of Nerf guns oh that they gosh. had. Awesome. And it's just, it's been basically World War III in our house for about two weeks straight. <laughs> What's the most expensive thing that's been broken? Has any been, any oh, been broken yet? I just try not to think about it at this point. <laughs> Mainly the house, I would say. <laughs> okay, right. Because I mean, you're what, a year and a half into the house now? Oh, yeah. A year into the house? Yeah. Okay. We, we've got Cyril, who's like not even a year and a half. He's decided to eat windowsills, literally. He's I mean, why eating you? the windowsills. Yeah. So drywall, <laughs> like has teeth marks in it. There are holes in the walls. I mean, how's and that I, possible? Like the angle doesn't yeah. work. Like a baby's mouth and the, I could maybe see the window seal, but how does the drywall fit in? You know, I, he just, it's at that perfect ledge height that he can put his mouth on it while he looks out waiting for me to get home or, okay. you know, watching the, the garbage truck and mm -hmm. all the boy activities. Yeah. It's well, something else. Well, that's fun. And, and you guys, uh, you got a little bit of room to run outside. Now I was out there. So, I mean, I know that a lot in Utah that's like, you know, a quarter of an acre is a massive farm, basically. And <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Um, there's room to run out there. But didn't didn't your boys help you recently? Didn't you slaughter a pig? I, I saw some pictures or something. Did. And, did you do that in your yard? We did that in my uh, father-in-law's yard. Okay. He had, we our zoning, zoning is tyranny. Uh, he, <laughs> <laughs> he had the the permission of the king, you know, to raise uh -huh. a pig on his land. So okay. we raised a pair, one for him, one for us. And we shot it. It was a little hairy though, because it's like a hundred yards from an elementary school. Okay. And so I was thinking out there with the rifle going, <laughs> could this, go to prison. Is this okay? Well, is that the <laughs> house that I slept in when I, in that basement where you guys were living in the basement and there was like a little field to the left? Is that Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yep, now, exactly. It's, it's funny because I think Lexi said at one point that, that her parents were talking about renting out the pasture. And I was thinking, I was kind of scratching my head. It's like pasture. What? <laughs> and it's, it was so weird. You know, you go out to Utah and it's beautiful. I mean, Ogden, you, everywhere you look is this beautiful. I mean, if you can see through the smog is the beautiful, uh, you know, scenery of mountains everywhere, but the lots are just so small and there's chickens yeah. and there's cows and there's horses everywhere. And so, here in Illinois, I mean, there's just wide open spaces everywhere. And so it was just a crazy yeah. thing to hear. You can raise and shoot a pig right here in town. I mean, it's just wild. Yeah. So anyway, we're so landlocked, yeah. <laughs> landlocked between the mountain and the salt lake. So we've yeah. got to make a profit on a there postage you go. stamp, whatever yeah. you got. Yeah. Uh, and, and to close out that conversation that went well, then the slaughtering of the pig and cutting it up. And I guess you, what do you do? Watch YouTube videos and just figured it out. Yeah. Joe Salatin. <laughs> there you go, man. Well done. We did a, Turned it all into sausage. My goal was to make a pig and turn it 100% into breakfast sausage. No bacon. A little bit of bacon. Okay. So 98% 98% breakfast sausage. Yep. 2% bacon. Exactly. And okay. that's literally it. It was awesome. Well, that's cool. <laughs> so I slaughtered our my uh, deer this year and processed processed. Oh it yeah. Figured it out and got the processing gear and then mix the spices together and made bratwurst. Mm. And so what we did was it was half venison, half pork butt. 
and we mixed all that Ooh. together. And I tell you what, it turned out pretty stinking good. And that uh, sounds good. It is. Yeah. So we're going to keep doing that in the future. Um, I'm going bear hunting this fall. So I'm pretty excited. I've been talking Ooh. to Eric a little bit about that and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting a bear and trying some bear meat. That'll be pretty cool. Next time, if I am ever a fourth time guest, I expect to see a bear paw hanging behind you. No, no, on no. Your back then. Head. Not a, head. not a bear paw, bear head. Two paws and the head in the middle. Yeah, I keep talking to Jordan. I keep talking to Jordan about this, man. And she, I'm like, hey, honey, don't you think we should have a bear rug with a head and the paws, everything, like on top of our bed? It'll be very warm. It'll be a great wintertime blanket. And I don't know why, man, but for some reason, she doesn't want that in her room. So, uh, girls are weird, man. I know. They're just weird. Uh, okay. So we're on today for a specific reason. We're yeah. wanting to talk about the work you've been doing. I tell you what, you got. I mean, so many irons and so many fires and you're doing it well. And from afar, I just love seeing everything that you're doing and, and I've learned so much from you. And this music you're putting out, man, is so good. And I've got the privilege of, of being a Patreon follower and whatever that's you know officially called supporter and been able to hear some of this stuff before it's released. And, and man, you are doing such a good job. Why don't you tell us why, the big why behind putting together this psalm project, and then tell us the process, process of how you got to where you are today, and then uh, release dates, and what's your hope with all this? So we're just yeah. kind of bring us up to speed and all that you've been doing. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for the support. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Yeah. It's uh, the one thing I realized that about a month into saying, okay, I'm going to actually try my hand at music production and not just dinking around. It was like, this is expensive. Mm, right. <laughs> So the, the supporters over there have really, really made it possible Good. to get stuff. And even folks in the church, like this microphone that I'm talking into, someone in the church that's actually good at this was like, look, <laughs> you got to just borrow this for a month, okay? That's good. And I, I made the mistake of Googling it to see if I could ever afford to buy one. And I was like, uh, no, no. Not going to. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, th this really started back when I was 15, leading worship for youth group. And they were just, hey, you're a kid with a guitar. You think you can sing. Mm -hmm. Lead worship. And, and from there, my first real experience in ministry at a church in an official capacity was leading worship for the, the cool night service. It was a pretty mega church sort of environment. And uh, leading songs now that when I think back, I just hang my head in shame okay give us one of those cringe. songs what's oh. the, what, the worst one you look back and oh. it, at the time you were so excited about it you were so pumped like hey babe we're singing this song tonight what was the worst one you now look back on shame in shame it's like it's hard to say because there's the ones <laughs> that i look back on in shame because they were just you know hip and cool but then they all went heretics like gunger yeah what what happened yeah that you make beautiful things that's yeah. right yeah i was at catalyst in like 2010 or 12 in, in atlanta uh, singing to gunger you know <laughs> yeah oh we all we were all there you know those of us who didn't have the privilege of growing up at christ church in moscow singing four-part sea shanty psalms <laughs> you know, whatever. dude, I was trying to, let's just pause on that for a second. I was trying to explain to Jordan. We, we went out there to that post mill conference and yeah, you know, you were sitting next to some guy and, and I remember like you're, you're turned to whatever page 167 and uh, you're, you're opening it up and this guy didn't have one, a hymnal in his hands and, and you're like, yeah. it's 167. He's like, I, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. And I, know. And I, I was trying to explain to Jordan. It was kind of like when they started singing, it was the scene in back to the future when Marty is over at docks at the very beginning and he strums the guitar with those massive speakers and he gets blown across the room yes. and his hair is blown up. And I was trying to tell Jordan, okay, here's what it was like. And everybody around me just started exploding. Yeah. I just yeah it was awesome awesome so, so yeah cool yeah definitely didn't Man. get to grow up in that kind of uh, that no. kind of environment no and, and you start you know like so i started back there i think a lot of us did mm -hmm. and and then over the years sort of just had steps towards okay maybe we should think about the regulative principle of worship oh okay uh and then you know, we really probably shouldn't be singing songs written by like the new apostolic reformation and, yeah. and uh, just those progressive steps kept building up. And the big one though, like the big turning point was, Hey, Colossians 3, 16 and 17, sing to one another in Psalms mm -hmm. and hymns and spiritual songs. And, and I'm asking myself, like, why don't we sing Psalms? Why don't we sing? I know, and you quote from the Psalms and mm -hmm. a lot of songs are informed by the Psalms, but why aren't we singing 
beginning to end a whole psalm ever, yeah. you know? And why did I never do that growing up? I, not, I can't think of one time in my whole life. Can you, did you ever do that growing no, up? Not a, a whole psalm? Time. Nope. And that is just a tragedy. So we started, and at this point, I'm the more preaching pastor sort of role, but still lead worship at least half the time at the church, lead the music, and um, just said, okay, we've got to start singing psalms. And, uh, and discovered, let me interject a thought real yeah, quick, just yeah. for the sake of context. Yeah. You started off at your church as the primary worship pastor or leader mm -hmm. of the church, and then transitioned yeah. into being the lead pastor, and then have still, you still done both of those roles pretty much. So, yeah, yeah. And we, we had a real transition point in our theology of worship and, in the, the, the gathered worship of the church, maybe three years ago where we said, look, that there, it, there shouldn't be this necessarily like quasi pastoral worship leader, the work, the elders of the church, the pastors of the church are to lead the people Amen. in worship. Yeah. So the elders all began to take a more active role in having a more robust liturgy. The elders are leading uh, pastoral prayer, praying for our rulers and civil authorities, praying for needs in the church, leading the people in the public reading of scripture and the responsive reading of scripture. Um, and, and having it so that when people go through the worship service, even if there's a, a non-pastor who's singing and maybe conducting or leading, the elders are the ones who are leading the people in worship. Mm -hmm. That was a yeah. big change transition for us um, that really started to turn, turn corners. Yeah, that's helpful. Were there any works? Because I, I remember years ago I was reading, um, who is the Sovereign Grace guys? Bob Coughlin? Bob Coughlin. And yeah, yeah. I, I think it was uh, his book. He wrote a book like Worship Leader or something like that or uh, I think it came out in like 2010 or 11. Hmm. And that was kind of a, uh, that was really helpful for me to understand, okay, there, there isn't this, uh, you know, competing thing happening between the worship guy and the pastor. Yeah. And there is this cohesive thing that should be happening that's governed by those uh, in the authority within the assembly, that this is a, this is a pastoral thing here. This isn't that the worship guy gets to pick whatever he wants to pick and do whatever he wants to do. And it's all hands off from the pastor. And so um, that was really transferred. Was there any works like that for you that were kind of like, okay, uh, or was it just, you know, diving into regular principle and seeing in the scriptures, like, wait a minute, something's, something's off. Is there any landmark moment for you or book? Mm. It was more that just in the context of having that realization of we need to sing Psalms, the elders mm -hmm. need to be leading worship. And then, going and reading a primer on worship, Douglas Wilson, or, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, some of the books, and there are still, my list actually is behind. There okay. are, I just recently even asked a friend out in Moscow, like, hey, send me the three best books on your covenant renewal liturgy and that, mm. that sort of thing. Yep. And, um, and, I, and I'm going to read those. But Did it happen to be uh, the Lord's Table or uh, what was it? Uh, Jeff Myers? Yeah. Um, yep. The Lord's yep. Table. Yep. I'm going or the Lord's right Service. Now. The, the Lord's, Lord's service. service. That's what it yeah, is. I'm, I'm right. working through that right now with a, uh, with a pastor, with a CREC pastor here in town mm. right now. And uh, it's been a lot of fun working through that. It's been very yeah. good. I tell you what, the one thing that, that I've really struggled with in that book. And I think that maybe the, there's the most difficult thing for you as a, as a good Protestant and Jeff Myers is a Protestant, but mm. uh, uh, the language of sacrifice attached to mm. communion. And when you yeah. get to that part that there's a, there's somewhat of a stretch there for me if, okay, let's just pull that language out of there. But that book as a whole does a really good job on the front end for anybody out there thinking through this stuff, get that book. It's very helpful. Yeah. Um, but on the front end, and it goes through like the five C's as well uh, through their liturgy of, of the CREC's liturgy. And it's just mm -hmm. a really good, but he's, I think he's a P uh, PCA pastor in St. Louis. Jeff Myers is really, I think, I think he's a PCA. I didn't know that. Yeah. He's in St. Louis. So he's just a couple hours from where we're at. Um, mm. But okay, so that's cool. So then uh, now you're, you're in this role and you're, you're starting to think about singing the Psalms and you're starting to put words to me, or not words, but you're starting to put music to words. So, mm -hmm. I mean, but now you're, you're about to release this album. So what's the three-year process or two-year yeah. process been like? What, what I started looking for is, okay, let's take a church that came from something like ours where their process is reformational. They, we started as a Calvary Chapel when I stepped into the lead pastoral role. Um, we were just kind of doing normal contemporary Christian music, what you'd find in most evangelical worship services. 
with maybe a little bit more of a, of a bent towards old hymns, very much influenced by the 2009 to 2012 Acts 29, Mars Hill world. Yeah. And going, this is good. This is, there are, there's a rich musical tradition that the Protestant church has neglected. We can recapture. But when it came to singing Psalms, I started to look and just found that you sort of have the multiple streams that are out there. Like you have the EP exclusive Psalmody guys that are EP, no instruments, and they've got metrical psalters that they're singing from. Mm -hmm. which is great. You've got sort of Christ church with four part singing, you know, Psalm 98 a or Psalm 119 to the Russia tune and they're fuging and they're really amazing and glorious. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping to get there, but the, the bridge between where a church like, like ours was at and that is, that's a big distance. Right. So what I couldn't find a lot of were, songs that were accessible to um, a church like ours that maybe even recognized in 20 years, we would like people to walk in and have that experience that you and I had at the missions conference, right? Getting blown against the wall by the, you know, 65 year old trucker next to you and the 15 year old girl who goes to the school and just the whole congregations acquire basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there wasn't a lot of bridge and, so what I started to do was just take metrical settings of the Psalms at first, and then writing my own metrical settings of the Psalms and um, trying to make them accessible to a church that was in our situation mm -hmm. to win them instead of, instead of just knocking them all over day, day one by saying, okay, guys, here's a fuging tune in four parts. <laughs> we're, we're just going to butcher it now mm -hmm. for the next six months yeah um and th there was one other sort of project to reclaim the singing of the psalms that i found and and those are the ones that aim to set english translations like often the esv you can think the corner room mm -hmm. word for word to music and that's great like for memorization but they're very very difficult to sing mm-hmm because there's no A, B, A, B right. structure. There's no, they're not put in a way that is very accessible. You have to just straight memorize them from beginning to end, the whole musical structure. Mm -hmm. So that I, I, I wasn't finding like something that fit yeah. with what we were aiming to do, what we needed. Yeah. Well, I love that, that it came out of the pastoral heart of wanting to bridge that gap, recognizing where you're at, where the congregation is at, where you want to be and bringing people along. And it reminds me a little bit of uh, hearing the story of Isaac Watts and, and wrestling through the Psalms and wanting to say, okay, here's Christ in the Psalms um, and wanting to bring that to people in a way that's accessible. And so in a different way than what you're doing, but still wanting to, to bring the Psalms into an accessible manner for people to be able to sing. So how's it been received so far? Not just, uh, not just out with people in the world. I mean, I've really enjoyed it. I've loved it. I've listened to it in my runs and in the car and I listen to anything that I've got from you and it's, I've really enjoyed it. It's great stuff. How's it been received by the congregation? Have they been enjoying singing the Psalms? Yes, we have been, th there was about a year where it was difficult. Okay. And you know, because you're singing like take Psalm three as an example, which I, I just took a long meter setting of Psalm three that I thought was fairly literal which is one of the big, I want them to be fairly literal that could be translations of the original languages, at least close to that. Mm -hmm. And you end up singing things like strike all my enemies on the teeth, the wicked's or strike all my enemies on the jaw, the wicked's teeth in pieces break. Mm -hmm. And I'm leading this song and I'm looking out, seeing some of the congregation going. <laughs> and what we realized is that some of them didn't realize that we were singing Psalms. Uh-huh. At first, okay. you're like, oh, okay, we need gotcha. to do a better job in the flow of saying, and now we're going to sing Psalm 3. Yeah, that's helpful. But what it did is exactly what you would expect the singing of the Psalms to do. And it just broadens out your range yeah. of, of understanding, not just like the emotional textures that human beings have in response to the situations of life and worship and mm -hmm. our needs and our anger and the injustice and joy, like all these different textures, but it also helps people to be challenged in their sort of baseline evangelical theology yeah. to go, 
oh, we're actually commanded to sing psalms yeah. where we are praying for God to utterly throw down his enemies yeah. and to destroy them. Which is, I love that God's word itself is controversial. And sadly, it's controversial within the church because I think there is a massive, not I think, I know there is because I've ran into these guys. Uh, yeah. There's a massive wave of people uh, that are saying, hey, it's not the way that you're speaking against the sins of the world. It's not the way in which you're calling out brothers within the church. Or excuse me, it's not that you are speaking out against the sins mm-hmm. of the world, or it's not that you are calling out false teachers or even you know, formerly godly men who are just getting in, into wayward and, and walking in some dangerous areas, but it's just how you're doing it. It's how you're doing it. And you know that same principle that's being just, I mean, idolized right now, if that's applied mm-hmm. to the Psalms, the Psalms are like, you know, you're, 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 again, praying your enemies down, you know, praying for their destruction, praying that the purposes of God would move forward to yeah. a point that, I mean, it can be uncomfortable. You're like, man, yeah. how do I sing this in a holy manner? And yeah. I love that, that, that the Psalms do that, that they stretch us in our prayers and our songs in that way. Mm. Yeah. Um, so how, how are you going about it, selecting the Psalms yeah. that you're going to put music to? And so has it been just, these are the Psalms that have been impactful to me, or is it I'm wanting to get a spectrum of the Psalms and, and put music to that spectrum from within the Psalms? Yeah, there's no like, at first, what I started to do was just say, what are some of the most important Psalms that we could have memorized? Psalm 1, Psalm 3, Psalm 2, which I didn't do in the, I didn't start. And so I'm going to do one, two, and three. I actually started with three and then did one and then two. And then I realized people are going to think I was trying to like go through them one at a time. Uh, Psalm 110, Psalm 23. Uh, Psalm 23 actually is a really good example of how a church can get into some of this. Hmm. Like in the, the EP that's coming out, the, the second, I think the second track is, an original setting of Psalm three. And I, I wrote a little bit of a different ending for it that I thought was musically interesting. Mm-hmm. But when we sing it as a church, uh, we, we sing it straight through the 1650 Scottish Psalter metrical setting to the tune of amazing grace. Okay. And, and I kept thinking like, I want people to have a good example of what this sounds like. So I, I just threw a recorder on the pulpit three Sundays ago and we sang that at the end of the service. And I, I ended up putting that as a sixth track on the end of the EP. So people could hear, like, this is how easy it is. Every church in America could be singing through a whole psalm this Sunday mm-hmm. with nothing that they don't know how to do already. They know wow. the tune of Amazing Grace. And it's not difficult to sing. It's not vir- doesn't take virtuosic musical skill. Right. Anybody can do it. And so some of the tunes and some of the Psalms I was picking were intentionally like, let's pick some Psalms that'll give people a taste of the glory without having to yeah. work for six weeks to learn it. And Psalm 23, there's not anything in that Psalm that is, has a sh- too sharp of an edge for mm-hmm. the average person in the pew. Mm-hmm. So some of them I'm picking for that reason, but yeah. at the end of the day, like the big values that are driving how the settings are written, Mm -hmm. which ones we're doing. I want them to be accurate in conveying the meaning of the Psalm as much as possible. We want to sing the whole Psalm beginning to end. Obviously sometimes that's not possible in the service like Psalm 119. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I want them to be performed in such a way, at least in the congregation that the primary instrument people are hearing is the voice of the people. Mm -hmm. I want them to be written in keys and in melodies that the average man can sing along with. And uh, I want them to be interesting to listen to Yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Well, I, mission accomplished. I've been listening and it, they're great. I think that most men can sing along and enjoy singing along. And most congregations, I think, are going to be able to step into this. Even even congregations are a little bit, you know, uh, on the further down the spectrum, kind of what you're talking about more on the Christ Church side, and who are still in that stream of of contemporary music or kind of the uh, edgy, almost like emo worship music kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it can be appreciated by a, a pretty broad spectrum of churches, and and uh, I think it's going to be really really helpful. And uh, so you did a really good job with it. Really good. Thanks, job. man. That's yeah. encouraging. Absolutely. So uh, people are listening in saying, man, this is great. I, I really like this. When's it going to be released and where yeah. can they find it and where can they find out more information and tell us about Patreon as well or Patreon, yeah. however you say it. However it works. So yeah. the, the current 
I have an EP up that I recorded in about an afternoon, <laughs> not thinking anybody would listen to it. And that really is what spurred this on is that that's, that's, that one's called Songs Worth Singing. It's on Apple Music, Spotify. You can just search my name or Songs Worth Singing. And that one has Psalm 3. Uh, it has, what else, what's the other Psalm? Psalm 95. And then an old Martin Luther hymn called Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice that I tweaked a little bit and wrote a new melody for. Um, that one's out. You can go listen to it. The next one is called Bright the Rider. That comes out on February 8th. It should go live in pretty much any streaming platform that you can think of from Apple Music and Spotify to the YouTube music, like obscure ones as well. T-Doll, Tidal. I don't even know how to say it. Yeah. Um, that will come out. My, uh, on my Patreon, I have a password, like private page where any of the, any level of patron can listen to that whole EP right now. Um, and that is at patreon.com slash Brian Um, and then there will be a, uh, I'm working on another EP right now that I'm hoping to put, I'm, I'm aiming to do about two a year, uh, if it's sustainable. And that one is going to be tentatively called something like kiss the sun. And it will be focused on the theme of messianic kingship in the Psalms. So Psalm 72, Psalm two, and uh, some super post mill hymns, and maybe. That, that's well. great. That is great. I love it. Um, well, people go out and get that. Go out and find that stuff. It's very good. Again, I, I just uh, commend that to you. Um, okay, before we get going here, and uh, you know, I really want to hear how you and Dan are doing with this school bus thing that you remodeled. <laughs> And I know for our listeners, they'll be thinking, what in the world, what's, what's that about? What we've uh, been influenced by, mutually, I think, and think you have, been influenced by C.R. Wiley's book, Man of the House. I think there's a yeah. you know, pretty good group of people that have, and this idea of productive property and, and making mm -hmm. things that, that will end up bringing you some passive income. And, and mm -hmm. so getting a broad uh, income stream rather than just from a, a local church. It seems like that's what you're doing with the music. That's what you're doing uh, in your life, even trying to make your home more productive, slaughtering mm -hmm. a pig and putting yeah. some meat in the freezer. And so tell us about the hat, what you were doing, because I think it'll be helpful for guys to think through different options for them about how they can, they can, they can do something like this, but you guys bought a school bus, you remodeled it. How's that going? Yeah, this is actually a good example of, of what it really looks like when you do this, because it's not like, an A to B process. You start throwing things against the wall. You start asking, what has God made me able to do? And what value could I bring to the world? Like what, what could I produce that other people would genuinely want to use or buy? Like not begging people, but like, is it good? Would they want to buy my product or, you know? Right. So the, we started out, Dan and I, with this short-term rental business idea converting a school bus. And we were about a third of the way through converting it every Tuesday morning from like six in the morning until noon, we would just be grinding old rusty carriage bolts. And nice. it was awesome. It was awesome. So we got there and I started doing this music pr project and, and uh, was running into this time crunch. Like I can really devote myself to one big extracurricular project right now. Mm -hmm. And one day Dan just said, Hey, I'm working on a side project with another guy that's like a hunting and outdoor industry project. Nice. And, and I'm really excited for that. I'll, I'll, I will shout it out when it's ready to be shouted out because it's, awesome. it's really going to be helpful for guys who are looking to basically have masculine hunting hobbies and make them to serve their home and not lose their home, not mm. be like, masturbatory like oh, I, I just go please myself out in the woods right. at the expense of my family so i'm excited for that project and he said look i am gonna need something like this as like a home base to bring the family hunting and mm -hmm. also as an advertisement like a branded schoolie that's hunting related would be really helpful can i buy you out and you can go focus on your music project very cool. so he he bought me out and uh he's still chipping away at it it's it's coming along really really well and it Very will be cool. like their mobile hunting outdoors um branded school bus which is 
I'm excited about. Very so, cool, man. I love it. It's just a good example of like, you start going down a road and you don't yep. realize what's going to happen. And, but you just do the next thing. You might mm -hmm. not succeed, but yeah. who knows? Yeah. Like it's in the Lord's hands. Just be faithful. Exactly. I love that. It's interesting because I'm looking to buy some property in Missouri mm -hmm. and do a hunting thing. Not, not like that, but I am going to buy some property and put some sort of a, uh, hunting cabin on it. Yeah. And then what I want to do is have a family vacation retreat place to go hunting yeah. every year. But then also wanted to open it up for pastors and, and have it be a part of the shepherd's crook as well oh, to have, you know, three yes. months of three months of bow hunting. And in Missouri, there's yeah. elk, elk hunting that just now has opened up this in 2020. It's the first mm -hmm. season. There's only like seven or eight tags given out. So yeah, big, big dollar, big money for that. Yeah. But uh, man, I can't wait to hear about that project. So that's oh. going to be pretty cool. I may need to have oh, him on really, to talk yeah. about that. Yeah. It, when it's on, you've got to have the two guys that are doing it. It's in, in, uh, I think I can say this without like blowing anything. It's, it is, it's Dan. So Dan is a executive pastor at our church. Just awesome, awesome guy, hunting aficionado, worked at a high level in the hunting and fishing industry before really <laughs> sacrificing a lot to come work for us at the church full time. And Eric Kahn, who's also really involved in uh, hunting industry, the NRA, like he's a journalist basically for the hunting and fishing industry and defense and guns. And so that's, I'm really excited about that project. I will keep you guys. I'll keep Jared. I'll keep you abreast of it. And then you've yeah. got to have those guys on once. Absolutely. It'll be very cool. Out. You'll have to drop, drop a line or I'll message them or something like that. Yeah. And set yeah. Something up when that's ready. But mm -hmm. well, I, I appreciate it, man. It's been so great. Uh, is there anything else that you want to send people to or any, anything else that uh, may be helpful for people or do we uh, cover all the bases you think? I think the big, the big three takeaways, three different people that I would want to address on this Psalm topic. First would be pastors who are, responsible with the leading of worship in your church, not just worship leaders, but pastors. If you're not singing whole Psalms, do it. Like we're commanded to do it. It will stretch and serve your church. And it's the Lord commands us not just to worship him, but how to worship him. And he says, sing the Psalms. If you're overwhelmed at that, just shoot me an email. I'll send you some chord charts and stuff that your church could, I guarantee you sing next week uh, with no new skills needed. Um, for the church that's in this process, the second sort of category, but it would like to keep growing. There's some other things. We've been doing a Tuesday night psalm singing workshop where we're working on some of these harder to sing four-part fuguing tunes. Uh, if you're interested in doing that, shoot me an email and I'll give you what we've got there. It's been really fruitful, massively culture building in the church in a good way. And then also just for dads with family worship, um, the home is where this starts. So if you want help just learning to sing the Psalms as well, um, same thing, shoot me a line and I'll, I'll send you some stuff that again, you won't need any new skills that you can help teach your kids how to sing whole Psalms. And it will be, it'll be a good training ground. Your church will thank you in, in 10 years for sure. Very good. We'll put all those links in the show notes and I've been talking to Brian Sauvé. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it.